All right, so where we left off, we were playing with not just the color overlay and the stroke on the different backgrounds. So we have like a double stroke because of the folder and an internal stroke. But we are now starting to play with, I'll do it on gray for the time being, the idea of a gradient overlay. Now I don't want this gradient overlay. That looks crazy. So gradients give you a lot more options than just a color fill. First is the direction of the gradient. And I just want something really straightforward, like a 90 degree top to bottom gradient shift. Now notice because I'm doing it on the folder, it's doing a gradient from the top of what's in the folder to what's in the bottom of the folder. But if I do it on the individual type, it will go from the top and the bottom of that individual smart object. And I don't want a gradient this extreme necessarily, but I also have it, because this is some stuff I was playing with on my own, I have it set on a blending mode. So there's just so many options. So to get started, it's good to start with normal. And it's good to not have the gradient at 100% opacity so that you're letting your color come through, especially if you're doing it on a folder. And this is something I just love about doing it this way, having layer styles on a folder for the type and then having the type underneath. Because notice that that layer style is also affecting the inner stroke of my type. The stroke is not just a solid color like it would be if I did the gradient just to that layer. But it's just layering effects to get what you want. And then, instead of normal mode, if I wanted some easy texture like I have on my illustration, I can simply change it to dissolve mode. Because I'm doing it at a lower opacity, I can play with how strong that is. Right. So I might want it pretty subtle. Work in progress. So let's see how that looks on white. Let's see how it looks on black. Now the only problem with dissolve is it gives you those kind of more effects on your screen. And until you merge it all, you'll, you'll keep getting those. So that it will look kind of buzzy and bright as you're zoomed out from it. But when you're seeing it at full resolution, you'll see what's actually printing. And I think that dissolve is too much. So I'm going to go to my gradient overlay. I'm going to change it from dissolve to normal. And I'm going to push it up. And then I don't think I want such an extreme gradient. Though I, I got to say, I do like it for this top part. So maybe what I do is this. I turn off the gradient here for the time being, and I do it with work, the gradient overlay, set it to normal mode, and move that on top of my color overlay. Which I should be able to do. Oh, here we go. Yeah, you click on it, and then you use these little arrows at the bottom. I, don't have, I haven't done this in a while. Let's see, how do I move it? Or, if that's not working for you, this is always the nice little hack, right? Compositing. Duplicate it. Because the smart object does not take a lot of extra memory. And then go to the effects, and you just turn off the color overlay there, because it will show underneath. And then you turn it on here. especially if I move it out of the folder. So really understanding how to work with effects is what's gonna, gonna matter here with your type. I'll also turn the stroke off because that's gonna complicate things. So you can get the same benefits by just doing a duplicate layer on top as trying to do it just to the stroke. So what did I say, 90 degrees, linear, normal mode. And then I can play with the scale. And then with the opacity, put 
why. Oh, because it's black, of course. All right, here's another way I can work with this. If I liked the way this looked, just for the work. It's a little complicated, but bear with me. What I can do is I can duplicate the layer or the folder, the whole folder, Command J. Then I can do what's called merging the group, and that will rasterize everything there. I did rasterize my letters, but they're on top of my vectors, right? All at full resolution. This is just to get this, this gradient thing that I recognize I might like, right? And then I don't need to keep it for this, <laughs> which is so I can delete that from that rasterized merged group, right? And then I'm free to play with maybe reversing the gradient there so that they have that same feel. Now you also don't need to use a gradient that has so many steps in it. You can create your own gradient. And I'm just going to put a little bit of dissolve into it. Oh, don't want it on that though. So I'm going to put a little bit of I'm going to do that exact same thing again, just to play with it. Duplicate the whole vector, merge them so they rasterize. Remember, it's a duplicate, though. And then I'm going to just play with normal and dissolve, change it to a lower opacity. And what I should have done is getting rid of the stroke before that. There we go. And then same thing here, change it to dissolve. And there's no reason for me to keep that, that stroke on as I did it, but this gives me a lot of control. All right. And I've, I'm just playing with stylized versions of my type, adding gradients. And does it work on gray? It works on gray. Does it work on black? It works on black. Does it work on white? It works maybe best of all on, on white. Though you don't get the sense of that double stroke until you get a little bit darker than white. Right. All right, so now I'm going to save it. If I'm happy with my color type, remember you can also add things like drop shadows, you can add glows, you can add all the things we are doing to our logos. Just depends what you're inspired by and what you're trying to do. But by and large, a lot of the stuff I like isn't filled with crazy gradients, has kind of a simple fill and a simple stroke. This, to me, would be too much for what I'm doing. But you could see how you could do that with multiple strokes and then moving the type and having it offset and layering it up, having inner shadows, outer shadows, gradients, glows. You can emboss, you can bevel and you can see what works for your type. Now, next part is background textures. And if I just look for a Google image search of texture, poster texture backgrounds, there is a large economy of places that will sell you place things, and you can download them for free. Different wrinkled papers, different vintage papers, different um, like Old West posters. So you could go with something like this. We could composite it. Remember, it's better if they are high res, and you'll find a lot of these on Pixabay too, so you don't have to worry about copyrights with Creative Commons open things. You'll also find texture overlays that help, right? And then this one, which is from Shutterstock, so it will have really, really pesky watermarks on it. But this is one I just love. And this is a vintage halftone pattern. So I'm going to play with texturing and coloring my background by making it myself. But you can also composite it in. Right? But if I use this, I'd want to, I mean, this would be a pain to use because you have all of those little Shutterstock watermarks in there. 
So remember, there's Pixabay. And then any designer that's worked for a while has their own collection of such things. And I have mine. It's all this. It's a collection of lots and lots of backgrounds with different patterns, different textures, risograph, halftone, some made by me with ballpoint pen, which I did for one series, and it's come in handy for lots and lots of projects. So for instance, something like this, you just drag in, and it's a nice texture, a nice, you know, it's all all ready. I can just move it behind the type, and then I can play with its opacity. until I'm happy with it, right? And I know that will print well, it's at high resolution. But notice, and I can also, of course, play with its proportions. But one thing we want to build in is not just a background, it's also a border. So this is a good instance where the border can be soft edged like this, this already has kind of a drop shadow border. It can be hard edged. It can have a stroke to it. All the things you do with type, you can also do with your background. Just depending on what the file is. So right now this is outside of the shadow. But what if I use my guides and say, okay, this is the proportion I want for my poster. But we need to build a white border in there because there's no such thing as printing all the way to the edge. There is only printing with a border and then cutting it <laughs> where you want if you wanted to get that look of being printed all the way to the edge. It's called full bleed printing. Okay, so I'll move my guides, then I will select it. Then I will duplicate it, and now it's rasterized at that opacity, but then I can also add things like a stroke around it, should I want. So a border can just be as simple, and usually is just as simple as a white edge. Here, I'll do kind of a dusty red. But you can give it a little flair if you want as well. And that might be your finished poster. Now what if we want to create something ourselves if we don't want to search and search and find high quality stuff? I also like things like graph paper. You know, there's all kinds of fun found textures. You can always layer them up on top of each other as well. So let's say I take that and then I use blending modes to layer the two together. Select the inverse, copy that out of the graph paper. And now I've got graph paper, I've got my my gradient, I've got my little red outline, and my type shows up. Right? That's why we do it on black, white, and gray, so we can have just full freedom with these kind of background colors. But if I want to make it myself, instead of using some of the things I've found, this kind of gets us into digital painting in a really simple way. We're going to kind of paint our background. So let me turn these off for now. Start with white, make a new layer. I'll just call it background texture. And I'm going to use not the paint bucket like we use for digital coloring, but the gradient tool. And it's just like the gradient tool in layer styles. You'll have all of your different things here. Yeah, let's try oranges. Why not? Or I like the iridescent. 